Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast, America's number one podcast for new real estate investors, where we know that finding discounted properties is the most proven path to financial freedom. I am your host, Brent Daniels, Mr. TTP, and I am telling you this, if I can do it, so can you. So let's get started. This podcast, this conversation that I'm about to have is the most noteworthy podcast so far this year. All right. So you need to grab your pen, grab your your, your pad of paper or scrap of paper, or whatever it is, and really settle in. Because listen to this. Let me hook you right now. All right. 42 months. 42 months it took this couple, this fantastic couple out of Columbus, Ohio, to go from zero real estate deals to in 2019 doing 160 deals and then in 2020 doing another 100 deals. It is my pleasure to introduce to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast, Josh and Tiffany Hi, Say hello to everybody. Hey, everyone. (laughs) How's it going from Columbus? Hey, Brent, thanks again, man. Oh, H. I owe. <laughs> Thanks again for having us on the show. Really excited. Um, looking to looking forward to dropping some value to everyone who's going to be listening. So you know what's you crazy? Again. This is the first podcast that Josh and I have done together. That's bananas. So, so. Well, this is going to be perfect because we're going to get both <laughs> sides of the story of how you guys started, how you guys got into this. Because, I mean, I, if you guys are watching this, if you're just listening to this podcast, definitely watch it on the YouTube channel because I've got a ton of notes here that I want to go through. But let's start 42 months ago, right? And the reason I bring it up in months is because that's how I remember everything when I had the my young boys, right? When my boys were born, everything was months, right? And you guys have a a four and a half month yep. year old, beautiful sailor, right? Yep. Uh, that's your daughter, and um, and you're still running this business. So not only can you have a family and be successful in this, but I mean, it started somewhere. It yep. started 42 months ago. What what? How do you guys even find real estate investing? How do you guys find this small niche in real estate investing, which is wholesaling? Yeah. So um, it all started back in May of 2017. Um, at- Long, long story short, my little brother at the time was 17. He got diagnosed with cancer and um, I was a corporate leader. I grew in the corporate space really fast. I mean, I was making very, very good money and I actually did love my job. It wasn't that I didn't love my job, Um, but my brother was in Nationwide Children's for a year and my parents owned companies. And the one thing that I was um, watching was that they never left a side for a year. So they took turns and there was never one minute, 60 seconds, over 365 days that my brother didn't have a parent next to him. And at about three fourths of the way through the year, I'm like, I'm never going to be able to be that parent. I'm going to, I'll never be able to leave my 95. I was traveling all over the country for my job and leading people. And I'm like, even if my kid did that today and I had a family, I would be a horrible mom. Yep. I shouldn't say horrible. That's a horrible. I get it. I get it. But yeah. Um, I just wouldn't have the option, I should say. And I wanted that option. So on Good Friday of May 2017, I woke up. I didn't even tell him at the time. I just called my dad and said, guess what? I'm walking out. I'm walking to my job today and I'm quitting. And I'm walking in the doors. And I'm like, should I be doing this? Should I be doing this? And I, I just left. And I said, hey, you know, I'm doing this. I gave him a month notice and said, honestly, I might fail. But guess what? If I fail, can you take me back? Because I've proven myself here And I just want this opportunity to do something that I think I want to go after. And I really didn't know an answer. I didn't know if I was going to be rehabbing, buying rentals. No idea. I just took the chance and leap of faith. Um, And it took us six months to find our first deal. Um, We had actually joined a program at that point. And I was blowing all this money on marketing for six months. And now looking back, it's probably because I didn't know how to talk to a seller. But it's one thing to get leads in, right? And it's another to close them. Mm -hmm. Um, And then... We got our first deal six months in, and from there, I was like, okay, now I got the confidence because sometimes we were just getting ready to give up. I was just getting ready to go back to my job, actually, and and Josh is like, give me two weeks. I know we can do this, and he was the reason why we got the first deal, um, thank, thank God, and uh, so from there, we made a goal in, what was it, 2019, remember? We're like, we can do one deal a quarter or something, right? Yeah, right, four deals. And then next thing you know, we ended up doing four deals. Four deals, deals the so. next month. And we're like, oh, wow, we're thinking small-minded. Let's do, you know, I forget what our goals went from there. But, um, you know, we started doing subject twos because we didn't know how to raise money. And then we joined a program, learned how to raise money. And it just progressed ever since. 
Right. And yeah. One thing I actually wanted to do is I want to back up to that first six months. Mm -hmm. I think in our society today, it's a, the microwave society. You know, mm -hmm. we have so much information at our fingertips and people expect things to be done today. Mm -hmm. Right. They expect results. They start one day, they expect results the next day. It just doesn't happen that way. Um, so I think the, the thing with us that we figured out was, one, you have to be consistent. You have to consistently be marketing. Right. And then not only that, but you also have to perfect your craft on the back end of things, like what Tiff said, the only reason why we got that first deal was because we figured out how to talk to sellers. Um, so once we were able to do that, you know, we were controlling what we could, mm -hmm. getting the, the marketing out consistently. And then on the back on the back end of things, we just had to trust the process. It takes time. It's not gonna happen overnight. So let's just to interrupt real quick, let's talk about how did you go from not talking to any sellers to being able to be comfortable talking to somebody to the point where they're going to sign a contract with you and you're going to get that deal. Like that six months. I mean, a lot of people are going through that right now, listening yep. and watching this. Right. Yep. And they're kind of like, how do I, how do I get better at this? How do I get more shots at this? Like what was that six months? Did you guys were having leads coming in, but was the lead follow up and the pre-qualifying? Like what was the, the two, I mean, what, what, what were the things that, that you were really working on to convert that deal? Yeah. Uh, to be 100% transparent, the biggest thing was practicing our sales. That, that's it. Yep. Um, so we actually would go through, we did a lot of studying on NLP specifically. Sure. And so there were three different tactics. What's NLP for everybody that doesn't know? Neuro linguistics program. Right. Um, so it's I a think way. that one thing they have to know though is, so we jumped in and we ha we didn't really have coaching at all. And so when I said, look, well, you have two weeks where I'm getting, I'm taking my job back. We were in a coaching program, but we never actually utilized the calls that they gave us. Mm -hmm. We were one of those students that paid for a program and didn't actually utilize it. So he was like, no, we need to use our coaching calls. So he called his coach every day for 10 days and practiced those NLP tactics and landed the deal on the 10th day. I mean, I, we were literally writing down five sentences a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And reading them out loud and practicing. And literally it was, I took three of those sentences that I would write down every single day, went to that in-person appointment. And so, you know, the seller at that point was asking $50,000. We ended up locking them up at $25,000. So literally dropped them by half of what they're asking was, mm -hmm. got our first deal, proof of concept, and boom, we just took off from there. And that's what we talk about on the show. We talk about the difference between faith is fantastic, faith is wonderful, but fact in business is so much more powerful. And crossing that bridge, you know, like you oh, were yeah. saying, I mean, proof of, proof of concept, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when, and now you're like, okay, we can repeat, we can repeat, we can repeat, we can repeat. And and I, I think it's really interesting that you're saying that, oh, wait, we have a mentor. Why don't we talk to him? Yep. You spend 10 <laughs> days talking to him. No, because everything that we want, and I truly believe this, is in somebody else's brain. Yep. It is. It's already there. There's some. It's somebody else already has it. We just have to ask the questions, right? And you put yourself in a position to ask really successful people questions when you do join a coaching or a mentorship. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've always... I've had coaches since I was 22 years. Well, I've had coaches forever, but business coaches since I was 22. And I, I, I don't know if I could do business without a coach. I really can I'm not promoting here. I'm just literally, that is, you tap into somebody that has way more experience. And then in 10 days, all of a sudden it makes up for that, you know, 170 days before that, that you were like trying to convert this thing. Right. So fantastic. So yeah, one, how do, thing, one thing that no one ever told me in the beginning too is, you know, so just a quick stat of our current KPIs is that a lead, it takes, once a lead gets into my system, right, which by the way, we were, by the way, we were using notebook paper by then. We didn't have a CRM. So once a lead comes in, they call us, say they want to sell. Our stats are it takes 125 days on average to go into contract because we're really good at following up on old leads. So if you think about it, back then we would get all these leads in and we would write them on a piece of paper and then I'd probably never call them again. And that was one of the biggest mistakes we ever made because the fortune's in the follow-up. So mm -hmm. we were only getting the deals that we just called that week, and then we pr pretty much lost track of them. So the lowest hanging fruit you guys are getting. Yes. And the lead fall. I mean, it's all there, right? I mean, it's you have the you're, – you're already hunting, right? You're already getting them to either call you or you're calling them or whatever else. You've got this opportunity. You've got their information. You know that they're interested in an offer. You just got to convert it, and yeah. it takes time. Ours is 92 days on average. From the first time that we talk to them on the phone, the very first quality conversation we have to the time we get paid, 92 days. So everybody out there listening, 
have patience, but also you got to do your follow up. You got to yep. do your follow up, and you got to try to shorten the timeline on these property owners um, as much as you can, because the 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 shorter timeline that you have the more likely you're going to get that deal, right? If they have a long timeline, there's a lot of other opportunities. There's a lot of other people pouring honey into their ear, telling them that they could buy the house or different strategies or whatever else. So try to shorten the timeline, but be realistic. We're talking 90 to 120 days. Yep. Yep. So you go from your first deal. Now you guys are like, oh, boom, yep. the rocket's lit, right? And this is, so you get your first deal just going into just the end of 17, yep. 2017, going into 18. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? Um, then we became rehabbers before wholesalers. Okay. So we rehabbed um, almost, it was between 36 and 40 deals that year. Um, I know that that sounds like a lot, but we actually made a lot of mistakes and we blew a lot of money. We paid contractors in advance and got screwed. And so although we might have done like, you know, well over a million dollars in revenue, it didn't matter because we weren't netting it. Um, and we just learned a ton of ton that year. I Wait mean, a second. When people make a million dollars, that's not your take home. <laughs> yeah. That's what all the gurus say, know. you know, I'm five like, million no, bucks. No, yeah. we definitely did not net that much that year. Um, but I will say, you know, the mistakes are what made us put more and more processes over play, over time. And one of the biggest pieces of advice I always tell newer people is, you know, be careful on who you do get help from. And you want to make sure that someone already had all those ups and downs because it's a part of the game. And make sure that when you guys are reaching out to whoever it is you want to mentor you, hey, what are some of the biggest hardships you went through? What are some of the losses you went through? Because I guarantee if they've done enough deals, they've lost money on something at some point. For sure. Um, and if they haven't, then they haven't done enough deals. So... I would just be, you know, that's one of my big pieces of advice is make sure you're learning from the right people and that they're not hiding those hardships because they're real. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's one of the most, if, you, if there's one thing you can take from a coach or a mentor too is like, what's one thing to prevent me from losing $100,000 on a deal, you know? Oh, 100%. So, but yeah, we made a lot of mistakes that first year on the rehabbing side and it just wasn't scalable. So what you guys were just raising money, did you have, mm -hmm. you had some private investors that uh, would, would give you the money for the down payment and the fix up and then you guys would split the deal? Uh, we pay 12% annualized interest. Got it. So yep. just no splits, just... That's fantastic for the investor. I mean, listen, I yeah. obviously investors would love to get the split as well, but 12%. I mean, yep. that's incredible. And so do you still work with these people? Do you mm -hmm. still get funding? Oh, wow. Yeah, we've had the same private lenders, the, our core base of private lenders since that year. So, Wh when did you guys start wholesaling? Well, so, well we started rehabbing first. Yeah. We started. So in 2018, with those deals, we had some big mistakes that she had talked about. And that forced our hand. It was, hey, it's do or die. Like we're either going to have to sh shut up shop uh, because of the mistakes that we were making or we were going to really scale this thing out and create the revenue to make up for those mistakes. Got it. So at one point, you know, we were sitting down and we're like, man, we, we really got to get this thing going. So um, then we, we, we realized that we had, to, we had to do some assignments. We had to do some wholesales because of the time it takes to do a rehab, right? You, you first have to go into contract. Then you got 30, 60 days to close on that contract. And then you got another one to two months to rehab it and then you got another month to close on it right that could be a six to eight month process mm -hmm. so we we realized really quickly that we had to start wholesaling and that's where our model went and we scaled that model um and then so we, we so it was actually that, like but. we were on our i don't know call it the 40th rehab and i was like this is miserable just rehabbing um and i was stressed out i had happened to call a friend in the industry in columbus and he's like why aren't you wholesaling i'm like i i understand the concept of wholesaling but i actually didn't know how it physically worked sure so um he referred me over to a wholesaling event and i went to it and i'm like wait a second you mean that i can sell a piece of paper like i i remember like walking out of that <laughs> right? event. i remember walking out of the event remember i was like this is the best thing that's ever happened to me because i'm really good at sales and marketing and mm -hmm. the contractor piece was what kind of held us back from scaling and so we walked out of that and i think in the first like 30 days we did like 200 and something thousand locked up in wholesales and i was like this is a game changer like this is going to change our lives i'm really good at systems and processes and he's the sales guru between us or the sales manager. So um, it just worked out really well. And we just took off from there. And then, you know, you have your other set of problems, right? So you scale wholesaling, and then there's a whole nother set of problems, just like we ran into rehabbing that we had to go back, restart, refinish and get better, better and better over time. 
I, well, listen, when I found out what wholesaling was, and I, I'd been in real estate since 2004, it took me like eight years, nine years, really. 2013 was really when I figured it out. I was like, what have I been doing? What have yeah. I been doing? Like, this is crazy. This, this is the greatest business of all time, right? Um, because one, your timelines are way shorter because just to break it down, Josh, you guys said 120 days of follow-up to get a deal. And then you have another 180 days yep. of fixing it up, taking care of it, paying utilities, paying insurance, paying your contractors, getting it through. Now, listen, the profit's fantastic. You're going to make more profit typically in most markets flipping than you will with wholesale yep. per, per deal. Right, but you can make you can make your wholesale money in two weeks. Correct. You can make your wholesale money in ten days instead of almost a year. So I mean, it's wonderful. Everybody out there that is thinking about, obviously, you know, this is wholesaling Inc. podcast. So we we were wholesaling first, but making that um, evolution into you know fixing and flipping. Just understand, it takes a longer time. It takes a longer time, and fill in your 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 cash flow needs with assigning deals yep. with wholesaling, right? Yep. Yeah, we're one of those markets. Um, so we're in Columbus, Ohio, and. We have friends, you know, in Cali where their assignments or wholesales can be up to six figures. You just don't have that in my market. Right. Like a house sells for 130 grand. You know yep. what I mean? So, um, so we do a, we do a mixture of both now and we just pay attention to what's it going to profit. And if it's going to profit three times as much as we can make on a wholesale and it fits in within our rehab criteria, we re re rehab it. If it's going to, um, but, but if it's going to make 25 grand as an assignment and I don't have to do anything, why would I not take 25 grand? So th there's different ways we look at it now. Um, so we do a mixture of both. Where last year when we saw, oh my gosh, wholesaling is, I can scale this thing massive. We kind of forgot about rehabbing. And then I, what happened was in 2020, I did an audit of 2019. I went back and pulled every property we sold to the rehabbers and saw what their sale price was. Yeah. And I was like, holy crap, we're giving up the farm here on some of these deals. Like someone in there just went in and put in $15,000 in work and probably made 40, 50 grand off us. Why aren't we taking on those? So then, you know, we just got better as time went on making sure we maximize our exit strategies. And, you know, what you should see out of the story is you can't be everything at once in the beginning, right? You just got to learn how to get your first deals yep. and you'll grow from there and always be a student of the game, right? So yep. it doesn't matter if I'm doing over a hundred deals, there's someone bigger than me and I need to learn from them next. And, um, I just think it's important to always stay a student of the of just learning, right? Well, listen, the foundation of a real estate investing business, a real estate business is sourcing opportunities, finding deals. Once you can do that and you can do it yourself, you're not buying it from other wholesalers or you're not getting it from real estate agents that are, you know, hiking it up or whatever else. And it's a rental. If you can find your own deals, you're in the driver's seat. You got to do whatever you want. You can wholesale it. You can flip it. You can you can hold it. You can do whatever. Right. Yep. Um, and that's such an important skill to learn initially. Learn how to hunt. Learn how to find opportunities. Learn how to pre-qualify them. Learn about the condition of the property, their timeline to sell, their motivation to sell, the price that they want. Those are the four things that you want to pre-qualify every seller with. And then it's all about lead follow-up. You start building in those disciplines, you've got a real business. You've got a real business. And then from there, you can you can do whatever. You know, I think that the path is learn how to find the deals first, which we call wholesaling. That's all wholesaling is. I mean, wholesaling, yes, we assign it and that whatever else, but it's really just sourcing the real estate opportunity. Pay off your personal debts. I, I f f firmly believe in not being a financial, um, you know, just stuck to paying all that interest and then start buying assets. I mean, that's the progression yep. of a real estate investing company, right? Yep. So you guys have just been cranking, I mean, over three, uh, well, over 260 deals over the last two years. And just some stats for everybody here, 62% uh, of your guys' business, Josh, is rehab. Right. And you guys, in 2020, and you make 32000 and the other 38% is wholesale, and you make 8500 Yep. So 32000 8500 this goes perfectly with your, if we can make three times, on, and this should be a rule that everybody follows, for real. If you can make three times what you can on a wholesale on a flip, flip it. As long, so the other thing with that is we don't take on full guts. Right. So 
Um, there is another piece to that criteria is we used to take on full guts and we ran into so many unknowns. And so if you're newer in the game, personal advice, don't take on full guts. Um, I think that you really need to take your experience and make sure that you're doing, if you jump into rehabbing, that you take on cosmetic rehabs and you, it's a stepping stone to really making sure you understand the permitting process and all that. Cause once you get into a full gut, it's a totally different ball game than, you know, slapping some paint up and putting granite down. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then getting the right contractors that are going to show up on time, that they're going to keep it in budget. There's, you know, with with contractors, there's that uh, that saying, you know, you get uh, it's either time, quality or cost and you only get two of those. So what do you want? Right. right. Do you want it to be fast and really good quality, then it's going to be expensive. Do you want it to be, you know, okay quality and fast, then it's going to be cheap, you know? So it's it's interesting um, to find the right people. And it takes some time, right? It takes yep. some time to be able to develop those relationships and get that consistency and get your crew. Yep. So I want you to think, Josh, of the the biggest wholesale deal that I want to do a breakdown on. So start start getting the... the biggest wholesale deal? Yeah, the biggest deal. The, the Ooh, biggest... Oh, Cleveland. Whole, Wholesale deal. Okay. Okay, hold on. Uh, let me ask you this because you guys do a fantastic job of this. You guys are loud on social media. You are. Not like crazy, but you're yourselves. And how important do you think that is in our community to to have that courage to be loud about what you guys are doing? So I'm a big advocate. And so the reason why I'm loud on social media, by the way, is because Take note of this. Every single one of my private lenders came from following me on social media. So I, so people, some people look at like, say I put a deal out there and I'm like, hey, I purchased this at XYZ. This is what my repairs were. I listed it for this profit. I'm not posting that to brag about the deal, right? Mm -hmm. I'm posting that because I want people with money to follow me. Not only do I want people with money to follow me, every single person sitting in my office who works for me is from social media following me. So when you put your company out there, your culture, your success, you know, these things aren't to, you know, brag about it to your peers. You need to strategically be posting on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, and be putting yourselves in communities where someone's eventually going to knock on your door and say, hey, how do I be a part of this? Or, hey, how do I lend on a deal like this? What does private lending even mean? Oh, let me teach you how to self-direct your old 401k. And that's how these conversations get started. So I am loud on for on a purpose, you know what of I mean? Course. So everything you want to, I always say everything you do in life, and this gets deeper, is needs to be on it with intent. And I have an intention when I post these things. Um, and so I, I encourage my community, my friends, my peers in the industry, put yourself out there more because you want to start getting into the rehab game, you need private money. How do the private money lenders find you? Social media, how else? Love it. Deal. Wholesale deal. Okay, I got it in mind. What do you want to talk about specifically? Uh, how'd you find it? Marketing okay. channel. Um, if it was from a certain list, what resources you use, well, just give us the whole okay. rundown. Um, so the one I'm thinking of particular, I believe it was a cold call. Okay. Um, so then it, it came in, um, and actually it took us several times to reach out. Follow up was key with this one. Uh, we got him on the phone, had a brief conversation with him, wasn't able to have that quality conversation with him. Okay. Um, but we knew kind of where they sat with things and we knew it was the deal. So consistently followed up, consistently followed up, would get them on the phone, just go a little bit more through that process to have that quality conversation. Finally, we identified that we had to get in person, uh, mm -hmm. which majority of our deals are locked up over the phone. Um, unless we see that it's something like this, it's a hot opportunity. We got to get in front of them right Real now. quick, when you say it's locked up over the phone, does that mean you're sending them a contract digitally? Yes. And, and are you signed. staying on the phone with them to sign it or are you just sending it? We are staying on the phone to get it signed. Yeah, so we you're saying- that. So you're saying, no, give everybody advice here. So yeah, you're saying- You should definitely talk about For that. sure. So we actually learned from doing it the wrong way. Uh, we would send out, let's just say 10 agreements because mm -hmm. someone said, yes, send it to me, let's go. And we would send it out and it would never come back. And we were asking ourselves, they said yes to the price. We sent out the agreement. Why are they not signing? Why are they not signing? And then finally we're like, hey, no, we got to stay on the phone and actually walk through this. If they have questions, we need to address those questions. There's some sort of fear and anxiety that, that that seller could have, and we need to help them overcome that. I love it. So just being on the phone, being that other voice of reason on the phone, too, to, to help make them feel 100% comfortable with everything 
is really what gets you that signature at the end of the day and gets the deal moving forward. So I love it. And it's the exact same thing that I do here in our business. And and I I train my acquisition managers to say this as a professional courtesy to you, we'd like to go through the contract, go through that. the agreement and, like and and just uh, make sure that all your questions are answered so that we can move forward and get you out of whatever the situation is. But a professional courtesy. I mean, you could use that if you feel weird about saying, hey, will you stay on the phone and go through this contract? Don't do that. Right. Just, you know, just kind of make it seem like this is normal. This is what, you know, right. most of my, you know, most of the people that I work with or most of the other property owners that we work with um, prefer us to stay on the phone and just go through the contract. So I think it's huge. And it's and listen, it goes into the abyss. You send it to that email <laughs> and they're not on the phone with you and you're not like uh, it's it's like scheduled that you're going to go through the contract. You never know. Yeah. And then you play the anxiety game. Yep. Then you play the, they've seen it. I see that they've seen it. It shows me right here. They've reviewed the document, but they haven't signed. And What's going that, on here? Are they leveraging me? Yeah. Are they really what, did yeah. I send it to the right person? Right. Is this actually the owner? You know? And then guess what? You Now all of a sudden you're 10 calls behind. Right. That you could have already made. Oh yeah. To get the next Because it's in your head. Yep. Because you're so excited. You want to celebrate that little, you want that shot of dopamine that's going to be like, yes, the contract signed. I love it. Right. And you're waiting and waiting and waiting. So just everybody out there, listen to what Josh and Tiffany are saying here. Get them on the phone. Keep them on the phone. Get the get the agreement, the paperwork signed on the phone, and you will win. Right? right? Absolutely. And by the way, this cold call that you did, um, do you remember what list it was from? I do not remember. No. Okay. Do you yep. remember what his motivation was? Uh, so the motivation was a divorce. So maybe that was what it was from. Okay. Yep. So this couple was going through a divorce. Yeah. And um, – so again, we we realized that we had to get in front of these these people. They were a little little bit older, not as technology friendly. Yep. So we went out there. Uh, we actually had several meetings in person. Um, there was a whole bunch of things we had to get very creative with helping them. You know, logistically moving furniture from point A to point B, helping them find a place, even getting creative on the back end because they needed funds before they could buy another place. Um, so like literally every trick in in the industry, we had to come up with and provide that as a solution for this deal in particular. Yeah. Um, but this is actually a deal that we looked at in 20, the beginning of 2020, we, we looked back and we're, this was a big wholesale for us. And we did like an audit on that deal in particular. And we're like, man, imagine if we would have rehab this, it was a very easy rehab, the only cosmetic rehab. And you know, the person that we sold it to, you know, we're real big into, I look, I don't, if, if I make money, you make money. Great. I don't want to count your Leave pockets. Leave meat here. on the bone. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that it's, it's a win for everyone. That's great. But this was a huge eye opener for us that, man, you know, we need to start doing these light cosmetic renovations because we could, that could have been a six figure deal for us. Right. Are you talking about Jordan Hall deal? Yeah. So we yeah. made, we made uh, 47,000 on the assignment. Uh, but the rehabber made 75 plus based on what we saw that he mm -hmm. had done and everything like that. And he renovated it in like two weeks. Right. So, I mean, this was so this a could big have mistake been, on our end that we didn't rehab. This could have been 100 plus thousand. Listen, easy, so. listen. Everybody out there is listening saying, oh, woe is you guys. You, made, you only made 47. <laughs> First of all, let's ring this victory bell. Come on. Oh, yeah. I love it. 47,000 from one phone call from a, probably a divorce list. Do you guys go after the divorce list? Yep. Is that something? Where do you guys get your divorce list from? We pull that from Tangi with foreclosure state. Yeah, really? yeah, absolutely. So. so we can pull it from the county. The problem with the county is that when they send you the data, they don't know if they own a house or not. So they're just sending everyone that went through a divorce where she filters out um, who actually owns real estate. Awesome. Yeah, she does probates, she does foreclosures, she does divorce, um, foreclosuresdaily or probatesdaily.com. Yeah, phenomenal. Uh, she gives a discount to Wholesaling Inc. Um, yeah. listeners. Yeah, she's so great. TTP, use TTP as your discount on that and you'll get hooked up. Um, fantastic. Now let's go into, because you brought some notes here. I did. Tiff, and I think that this is really important. I think this is really where people are going to get just an incredible amount of value because... Uh, and, and I talk about it on, on the show here that you got to track your numbers. 
right? You have that's the difference between amateurs and pros. Is you got to track your numbers. If you don't know your numbers, then how are you going to get predictable? And if you're not predictable, then you're just hoping things are going to work out, right? Predictability is what sets us up to hire people, to scale, to make really smart business decisions, to decide if we want to quit our job now or not. You know, it because it comes down to tracking your numbers and figuring out how many people do you have to talk to to earn a living in this business and then to go and go and build a business and be like a true uh, entrepreneur. So do you want to talk about what you guys track on the acquisition side first and then I'll say why this is important? Yeah, yeah. So one thing that we track on a daily basis is I want to know how many quality conversations we have. Love it. Right? And when I say yep. quality conversation, I'm talking in our script. How many people are we taking all the way through the script? Love it. And then from there, how many so of those So we call people... that a process. Correct. Yep. Process. So that's that's okay. a process. So we want to know how many processes we have on a daily basis. And then from those processes... How many offers are we having on a daily basis as well? Mm -hmm. um, and then we have we know that you know based on right now actually our team is crushing it on offers to to deal right now. Um, we're just under four, so if we make four offers, we have a deal That's crazy. signed. So this is when you say offer verbally. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right, but they're pre qualifying them before they're giving a number, or are they just so throwing they go, a number. They go through our script. Okay. Um, that's that quality conversation, yep. that process call. Yep. So a lot of people ask the question, well, why aren't you giving an offer to every process you do? And there's a bunch of reasons because they might not be right. qualified or they might need to be referred to an agent. So what we see is about one of every two processes we make an offer. Love right. it. Right. Yeah, we call it leads and quality leads. Quality leads are the people that we that we know the condition, the timeline to sell, their motivation, and their price. Right. You know, we pre-qualified them. So what you're saying is a process lead is somebody that you pre-qualified. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. Awesome. So, the, so he just told you, let's just assume for numbers sake that we land a contract for one out of every eight offers. Okay. Okay. So everyone get out their pen and paper because I'm going to shout out some numbers. And so what happens is a lot of peers in the industry, I think the biggest thing people run into is they're just operating every day and they don't really know what they're supposed to be doing. We literally know what our team needs to be doing every hour of every day. And then the next day we go over yesterday's KPIs to make sure we're staying in line with where we need to be going to get hit the revenue goal, right? Yep. So let's just assume that you want to hit $100,000 this month, right? And your average profit per deal is $12,000. So the so the industry standard right now, if all you do is wholesale is, we call this the success rate. So normally the industry standard is 60% close, 40% fallout due to title issues, whatever. Ours, we use 70% because we rehab, so we have a little bit better success rate with closing. Yeah. And then I just made an average number of, you guys should be tracking this. How many leads does it take to get a contract? Mm -hmm. Okay, so so if I have, we for the sake of this offer, we're going to say our average profit per deal is $12,000. Our success rate is 70%. The leads per contract is 75, which I think is a pretty good industry standard. It's great. Eight offers per contract, right? So then that tells me, okay, if I have a, if you don't know your revenue goal, guys, you won't know what you have to do to back this down. So you need to get very clear with what the the revenue goal is. So let's just say it's a hundred thousand um, dollars. So if you take with the seventy percent success rate at the twelve thousand profit, you need eight point three three deals to close. So the twelve thousand times eight, you know, you hit you up to your hundred thousand. So then you take the eight point three three deals to close and you divide it by 0.7 because that's the success rate. And it says you actually have to put twelve houses in contract and eight of them will close essentially, right? I love it. So <laughs> if we break that down to weeks, we take twelve contracts divided by four weeks. That says I have to get three contracts a week. If I get twelve thousand dollars times three contracts, that's thirty six thousand in projected profit. Now projected means that um, you know now seventy percent of the thirty six thousand is actually going to close. So if I get thirty six thousand in projected profit, twenty five thousand should close on average, right? Mm -hmm. And so what the, what that says is, okay, if I got to get three contracts, then I got to take seventy five leads times three contracts. Is this quarterly? So this is broken down on a monthly basis. You can do the same thing quarterly. You so get just, three. No, this well, is for to, one month to get to hundred thousand for one month. I'm just using an average. Oh, number. to you get to a hundred thousand for a yes. month. Got it. You know, so if, yep. if if your goal is quarterly, then now all of a sudden the, yeah, the number of weeks it. just yeah, changes. Yeah. So I'm okay. just trying to keep math simple for yep. one month. So if I have 75 leads a contract, I got to produce three a week on average based on what my average profit per deal is. I got to produce 225 leads a week 
to get get down to that. So now now I know what my marketing has to produce. So mm-hmm. if now you're not surprised or understanding if you produce 180 leads this week, well, what does that mean? If you're not tracking this, you don't know if you should increase, decrease, decrease whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that equals 45 leads a day. So that's someone with these stats says, if you're not producing 45 leads a day, then don't be surprised if you don't hit the contracts. So then you take it down to eight. If you land one of eight offers, so it's eight offers a contract and you need three contracts, your team needs to produce 24 offers a week. So it this is why we're big on daily huddles because if, say, we go into a Wednesday or a Thursday mm-hmm. and we only see three offers have been made, well, guys, no wonders why we're not performing, right? Because the stats say that, you know, my three guys evenly split out need to be making XYZ offers per week or don't be surprised if we don't perform. Yep. So if when you get that granular down into your numbers, it helps you understand why you are or aren't performing. And you aren't predictable if you aren't tracking these things. And yep. guys, if you want to be here in 10 years, you need to become a predictable, consistent co- company. I don't care if you want to make 10 grand a month or 100. You still got to be tracking down to the granular. How many leads a day do I need to produce? How many offers? How many processes? Well, and it also, well, no, but it, but, and then you add the human element, right? What if your acquisition manager goes on vacation? Who's covering for that? What if somebody's sick? Who's covering for that? You know what I mean? You've got all these little things going on. You've got the, you've got the analytics and then you put people into the positions to win, right? Yep. And when you hire somebody, listen, you have their financial responsibilities in your hands. Mm-hmm. So you need to be the rainmaker. You need to be able to provide that 225 leads or whatever it is to be able to get to the point where you are closing three deals every single month or week or whatever it is uh, to break it down to get to the the goals that you set. But from if somebody's just doing it, if you're just doing it yourself, it's easy to track how many conversations are you having to get to a lead? How many leads are a contract? How many contracts close? And what do you make per contract that closes? Right. Right. Simple math. Right. Yeah. And then just. And if you're not tracking this, what it's going to result in is turnover. Right. Because what's going to happen is your sales force is going to say, well, um, I'm making these offers. I don't understand why. And then what happens is you'll walk in the room and be like, well, make more offers. Well, how many offers? Like it just eventually they see, okay, you're not putting the right resources in my hand. We don't understand your vision, what we're supposed to be doing, and they're going to leave. Right. So yep. there, it's, a, it's really big that not only to become a predictable company, but if you really want to sustain talented people, mm-hmm. you need to be setting a clear plan in place in front of them to be able to perform against even for the person who's doing this on their own too i mean there's there's people have pure anxiety just not knowing right Mm -hmm. how many more people do i need to talk to until i get a deal you know they're just like when am i going to get a deal when am i going to get a deal if you're not tracking these you'll never know right 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 and when you're starting out you have to build up right you got to build it up you got to build up your lead pipeline Mm -hmm. you know if you start with zero leads it's going to take 90 days to build up a pipeline Mm -hmm. it's going to take six months to get the deal closed, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, and I've seen some of the most successful uh, wholesalers around the country took five to six months to get the, their first deal. For sure. it's it, That's just real, you know what I mean? Um, but it's going through, it's keeping that confidence, it's keeping up and understanding that other people are doing it. We do an interview, we show, show people every single week of people doing this to give an example that you can do this. So don't get discouraged if you're in that first start, you know, you're building up your momentum. The train's kind of slowly creaking down the tracks. Like it'll build up momentum. It will. And then your first six months, zero dollars. Your next 36 months, it's been bananas. Millions. (laughs) You've made millions. Right. I mean, it's absolutely bananas. So um, you guys do something cool. You guys are in Columbus and um, you guys do uh, a cool... Um, you, you, you have a few different kind of trainings that you guys do. How do people find out about that and, and, and interact? And if they're feeling you, they're either hearing you, they're seeing you, and they're really like feeling like, like they, they connect with you guys. How do they reach out and how do they find out more about you guys and your, your, um, your mentorship? Um, I mean, we're on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Tiffany and Josh High, and we have a link to what we call a virtual group. Um, we're really bad at branding the names of our trainings, by the way. So it's something we got to work on. So it's virtual. Um, so one of the biggest things that I'm a big advocate of is, you know, you have to start somewhere to progress. And that's what we learned over time, right? Cause we had all these ups and downs of, oh, systems and foundation come first. So we always, um, require everyone that wants to join our program. They have to come through this first. 
It's because we got to get your your foundations built first. And even if we have people that come through this that do 20 deals a month. Right. And the reason why is because they can take something away that maybe they're just like weekend too. I'm sure there's something on my front end I can get better on. And so we talk about all of our systems, our marketing, our CRM. What are we tracking? Mm -hmm. And because all those things, you have to have those in order and before you can just train a sales team to perform, right? You got to give them the right phone systems, the right tools, make sure they can be the most productive that they can become. And so I'm a big believer that it starts with the foundation. And I don't care if you do one deal a month or 20 deals a month, that's where you're starting. Because yep. I feel like everyone can get better on the front end. So we go through that for four weeks live with us. Um, it's all recorded. We give you tons of documents. And then from there, it's like, hey, now the next step is once you have the right tools in place for your, your team, well, now now you got to learn how to close the deal, yeah. right? So yeah. we have a workshop in our office and about 70% of that's primarily focused on now we need to teach you how to get the deals closed and lead a team. So a lot of events in the industry, they teach you how to close a deal yourself. But if you guys really want to scale, you need to learn how to manage people. And that's really what you guys are masters yeah. at. You guys are masters at teaching people how to scale, Yeah. right? I mean, you guys have been yes. doing it this last year. I've, everybody just is, is like so wildly overwhelmed with, you know, how, how well they've done with following your guys' you know, scaling model, right? And then people get to see a live at, at your office, which yeah. is which is dope. I love that. Right. That's awesome. So how do they? So hi H I G H. Yep. Both you guys on Instagram, uh, website, anything like that. I sent. So this is something I got to get better at. Okay. But I don't just give the website out because I want to make sure that I'm the right fit for you. Right. And so that's one thing about our program is you do really have a personal connection with us. Love it. Because I don't, if I don't add value to you, I, I don't need your money. It's the same with me. Right? Yep. So like, yep. if, if yep. you're the right fit and I think you're in the right position to be with us, I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. And if I don't think you are, I'm going to tell you that and I'm not going to just sell you something. So Love it. you actually have to come through us, make sure that we're giving you the link and we understand where are you at in your business because I'm not just selling this to make money. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it does take a lot of my time, but you do have a very um, niche, I should say, experience with us directly. Awesome. Um, but it is time consuming, right, to get back to all that. So I'm get, trying to get better with that. And I promise I'll get back to you within, you know, 48 hours if you reach out to me. <laughs> awesome. So, guys, if you are interested in scaling and really just if you're just feeling the, the energy and the um, the uh, experience and you're feeling something uh, good with these guys, definitely reach out. Uh, what's the Instagram handle? It's Tiffany High Official and Josh High Official. Love it. Yeah. And real quick, because I didn't get to it and I think that this is important. How do you guys find, how do you guys get so many leads? What's your marketing channels? What does that look so like? We, so he knows nothing about our marketing. Okay. So I handle so all I do that. Your conversion. <laughs> yeah. sales Which is important. Listen, she does 100 in this business, in it breaks down three parts. Lead generation, conversion, which is sales, and uh, exit strategy, which right. is flipping or wholesaling or whatever else. So lead generation, how do you get 200 leads a week? Yep. So we primarily do RVM, okay. SMS, cold calling, and Facebook ads. Love it. A lot of people ask me why I don't do PPC. Um, I've just never had a great experience. So not that it's not wrong or right. If it's giving you a return, keep doing it. I've just personally not been good at scaling that. Um, we used to do direct mail. We don't do it today. Um, no in particular reason. We are thinking about doing a very niche list coming sure. up. Um, but those are our primary channels. And then we also buy off wholesalers. We buy try to buy a fire house, how, fire damage houses. We have other little niches that aren't as big as the cold calling SMS, RVM, and Facebook. Love it. Thank you, guys. Yeah. yeah incredible. Yeah. Incredible. What an incredible podcast. I mean, a lot there to unpack. Definitely, if anything, uh, you didn't catch all of it the first time through, go through it again. Listen to it. Watch it again. And, um, yeah, exciting. A, a couple of the resources um, for Closures Daily or Probates Daily. Definitely check that out. Coupon code TTP. And if you're interested in joining the most proactive group in real estate, it is the TTP family, uh, the TTP program. Go to Wholesale. Wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. That's wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. Check it out. Scroll down. Check out all the testimonials. Keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Your scrolling finger will get tired because of all of the testimonials and success stories. But uh, no, seriously, uh, just like these guys, um, I work personally with you guys and I look forward to working with you. So um, that's it. Thanks Thank you guys. It's so incredible. 
thank you guys and everybody out there. As always, I love you and encourage you to talk to people. Till next time. See ya.